up guys Westtech Gary here to do a PlayStation 2 collection video without further ado let's go ahead and get started now the PS2 collection video this will be kind of a long video since our PS2 collection is really big but I this my PS2 collection used to be triple the size of this I'm not going to say double it was triple the size of this and I sold so much stuff and I wish I didn't sell as much stuff but you know how you are when you are when you're younger you don't really keep all the stuff you don't really care about them as much but when you get older and kind of regret selling some of the stuff that's what happens when you go older you know because back in the day like I had so much PS2 stuff and I tripled the amount of that and then I sold a lot of it for some reason I don't know why it's because space it was taking too much space and I didn't have a lot of space and my gaming setup back then now I have a lot of space and let's go ahead with the the game collection video now one of my favorite Simpsons game of all time or if not my favorite Simpsons game is Simpsons Hit and Run Simpsons Hit and Run was a really good kind of Grand Theft Auto kind of simulator it was very similar to Grand Theft Auto but for kids so kids can kind of play it because you couldn't really there was no guns in the game there was no like like no bombs, no tanks, no nothing, you know. And when you stole someone's car, you know, you wouldn't be kicking them out, beating them up. You would just take them at the car and no, actually you wouldn't take them at the car at all. You would just go in the car with them in the passenger seat while they drive. That's what it was like. I remember that a lot. And this game was just such an amazing game it was. I loved it a lot. It was really cool it was. It was so cool like, like the, you know, exploring Springfield and the different worlds the character get, gets. Like for instance, it's the first level and you can drive around that part of the city which is his house the where, and where he works, you can drive where he works and you can drive through there and there's like other places you can go to like like the shops that are all there, it was really cool it was, I loved it a lot and the missions were really good they may have been simplistic but I just enjoyed just ro roaming through the city as the Simpsons you know um, the, my favourite levels from this game was the Simpson, the Homer Simpson, who else? Bart, definitely. I liked uh, Marge's and Lisa's. I, I, I think I like them all to be honest. They're all so really different and unique, all the worlds are. And in total there were seven worlds. I uh, played this game so much, so heavy back in the day. So many times I'm still not sick of it. Even to this day I'm not sick of it. The last look at the game, uh, take a look at it. But it's kind of like GTA simulator. For those, it was for those people who couldn't play GTA, you know, th this was their kind of option or, you know, is this for people who love The Simpsons? And I happen to love The Simpsons a lot, so I got this game and it was such an amazing game. I loved it a lot. So that's one game right there. Next, we'll stay on The Simpsons. The Simpsons game. The Simpsons game, man. So I had to do that there. The Simpsons game was such a great, great game. And I think this game was so underrated, so underrated, because I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why it was so underrated. It was basically, most movie licensed games, for, for example, like Spider-Man, um, is so trash it is. It's because they only have a limited amount of time, because they don't know when they're going to make a Spider-Man movie, for example. So... They, the, the movie, the people who make the Spider-Man movie tell them like last minute, like two months, three months beforehand and then what they do is they have to do a rush job in it. That's what, that's what all the Spider-Man games are completely trash. The new Spider-Man game on the other hand will not be trash because they spent a lot of time in it because it's not a movie based game and I'm really glad they did that. But people probably thought it was something like that but it's nothing like that, it's absolutely nothing like that. It's the complete opposite. This game was a really great game. If you love The Simpsons, you'll love this game, okay? It, it makes you, you know, control all the Simpsons characters with all the different unique levels and there's two-player co-op, uh, local co-op, not online. And it was just such a great game. It was all the great levels, all the great powers, like Bart, Bart has Bartman, that's his powers, you know, that's kind of a, um, you know, knockoff of Batman, but who cares, Bartman's awesome as well. Uh, we've got Lisa, she has her, um, what, what does she play, saxophone, yeah, her saxophone, and Homer has his, um, 
you know his humor like his, when he burps all the time that's one of his um special abilities or when he eats so many donuts he just goes into like his big balloon and starts ramming at enemies in which is so awesome and marge has her um, she has this horn thing which she speaks out of which attacks enemies and they can all punch characters and it's really cool it's all the level designs everything was such a great unique experience playing this game and i really enjoyed playing this game a lot so hands up to that game Next, we're going to go to Smuggler's Run. Smuggler's Run now, one of those great games. Rockstar Games, good on you. It's such a great game. Now, actually, I didn't know about this game, but I got given to I got given this game by someone, and I just played it because who, who, who wouldn't want a free game? So I thought, let's try it out. And I had nothing to play at the time, so I thought, I'm going to try this out. I tried this game out. It's a really great game it is, I never thought I would like it, it's kind of like an off-roading kind of game and it's two player as well, so or like an off-road kind of game, you can drive various different cars like the, the you know, it's kind of like off-road cars like the buggies and uh, the, um, like the bikes and stuff like that, all the off-road cars and I don't really know the names of all of them because I'm not really familiar with them, but you know you can kind of get the idea, it's kind of an off-road kind of game and you can explore the environments in it, you can do you know fun races with your friends and you know make up your own funny thing that's what i used to do it was such a great game it was i'm so surprised i never made another one of these games like rockstar games i know you read gta the grand theft auto series is a very successful series i'm very happy with it but i would like you to see i'd like you to go back to all your other previous releases such as smugglers run um midnight club and make more you know more like future like games like that like in the next generation in the ps4 and the xbox one i would like you to experiment with another um smugglers run game a midnight club game i would love to see that because i know they would do something even better because it would top it even more than what they did previously and what they did previously was amazing next okay now this game right here a lot of people didn't like this game but when i first saw it i was like what the heck sonic and a werehog? What the heck is going on here? Um, and I was like, Sega, what, what are you doing here? I was so surprised. I was actually probably, you know, interested in this. I was like, is, will this kind of work? Will this work? Because so no, you know how Sonic, Sonic is special ability, it's a speed. And I thought, how can this kind of be implemented in the gameplay? You know, because, you know, you play as two sides, the werehog and, and the, the normal Sonic. Alright, this game actually turned to be one of my favourite games. But I would say the map is kind of confusing of this game. Because I remember playing it and the map was kind of confusing of the game. But I would say the game is really good. I'm not going to lie. Like a lot of people said, ah, oh, I hate it. It's such a trash game. Why did you make this irrelevant trash? And I'm glad they made this game because I really enjoyed it a lot. You know, this game's not for everyone you see. But I'm glad they made this game. Because I like how they implemented the Werehog um, kind of character. The Werehog Sonic character in here like with his special powers and all that. Like he can't run fast. Only the normal Sonic when you... When it's morning time, uh, you, you, you're you the normal Sonic. That's how it works. And when it's night time, you turn into the Werehog. And the Werehog doesn't run fast. Okay, he has his own special abilities. He's like... He's got the strength. That's what he's got. And Sonic has the, the speed. That's what it is. But he doesn't have the strength of the Werehog. So that's how it kind of works and basically what kind of happens is my favorite part of the um, the the favorite part of the game was the opening sequence that was such an amazing opening sequence to a game honestly like sonic was like running super fast and eggman was coming right after him he's then um, sonic was like beating him up like a boss and he thought he got him and then eggman like he put him in a trap, like, you know what I mean, he was pretending that he, you know, he was pretending the whole time that he got taken out and Eggman put him in a trap and then he put him in a trap and I never expected that because Sonic's always the one being up Eggman, you know, um, you know, being him up and getting away and, you know, you know, doing some stuff, locking him away and then I didn't expect that to happen to Sonic, I was like kind of shocked, like what, this is actually happening and then basically what happens is um, Eggman puts his, p tricks him to going into machine and then he, um, what's it called? And then the machine kind of takes his powers away, and then it turns to the werehog, and then he gets blown out of the space, and he gets put into Earth, and all his emeralds are scattered all over the city, and then he needs to go and find them all and stop Eggman at the same time, um, so he become normal again. So it's a really good game. Good game it is. I suggest you pick it up. It's for it's out for PS3, Xbox. Um, all the consoles basically so check it out 
Right. I'm gonna bring this game out. Now you know how I feel about Spider-Man 3. On my PSP collection video, I actually did show you how I felt about it. And if you didn't watch that video, I'll kind of tell you again how I feel about this game. This is one of the best Spider-Man games, if not my favorite Spider-Man games. I'm not saying, well, I'm not engraving it down somewhere and like telling everyone this is it, this is the way you need to think about a Spider-Man game. This is the best one. Out of all of them, you have to say it's the best one. No, you can all have your own opinions. A lot of people like Spider-Man 2 the best. I didn't like Spider-Man 2, you know what I mean? Uh, I keep me 100% real. I didn't like Spider-Man 2 whatsoever. Spider-Man 1 was really great. Spider-Man 2 wasn't as great. Spider-Man 3, I loved it a lot. The Venom boss battle was such a great boss battle it was. I loved the, just, flying to the city. I loved everything about this game. And yeah, it's my favorite one. Like I really loved the, the Black Spider-Man, which is really cool. I'd love to see the Black Spider-Man return, like that Venom, like that Venom, uh, Spider-Man battle come back. I would love to see that again because I really love that. I've, I love Spider-Man. Spider-Man 3 is my favorite Spider-Man movie and this, the game is my favorite so it's a really good combination. So I love that a lot. Next, speaking of Spider-Man 1, here's Spider-Man 1 right here. Really good uh, Spider-Man game. The one thing I didn't like was the way he fl the way he swing through the city. Uh, I didn't like it too much because you didn't really have much control over it and that's what I didn't like about it. I love how the Spider-Man 2, 3 and you know all the other ones, uh, you can control the way he swings and you can choose what direction. This actually does it for you. You just press a button and he starts swinging himself. You, you have to just use the analog stick to just put him in the right direction so he doesn't, you know. So it shows the, so I think, it makes the player like think that, you know, makes the player feel that it's actually controlling Spider-Man, but it doesn't actually really feel like that. That's the only thing. I actually love one of the missions, which is very memorable, which is the one where you break into the building and all these robots are coming after you. And you really have to, you have to use so much stealth just to like, I don't know what it was, to do something, to get to somewhere. I don't know what it was. It was been so long ago, I've not played this game. Uh, and then you have to do so much stuff. I played that mission so much. It was such a hard mission it was because I kept getting caught so many times because these robots had, had these lasers. If you get caught, then that was you done because all of them would come up left, right and center. And that was you gone. You have to use stealth. And that was such a hard mission. I remember like struggling with that mission a lot. That's one of my memorable missions of that game. Right. Sonic, Shadow the Hedgehog. Right. Shadow the Hedgehog was a really interesting game. It's kind of like a, I don't know, it's kind of a strange game. I didn't really like it too much, but I liked it when I didn't like it. Like, what the heck? It was a great game. Like, I don't get it. It's such a mixed feeling game. Like, I don't know what the, like, when I played it, I don't know how to explain it. It felt like a game, like, what the heck am I playing here? But at the same time, I like certain things. And I was like, what's going on here? You're doing too much here. Like, first, like, beating up Sonic. Then you're beating up uh, Eggman. Then you're doing this. Then you're then you're being good. Then you're being bad. Then you're doing this. I don't get what's going on here. It's really confusing. It is. It's not my favorite game, but it's, it's good. But, uh, I don't know. It wasn't the best game. Pimp My Ride, you know how I feel about it. I don't know. It wasn't the best game. I don't know, do you know how the TV, the, the show, Pimp My Ride, the actual show of it, it's nothing like that, because you, you do get to pimp up the cars, but I would have liked to see some races in there, I would love to see some other stuff in there, like I didn't like how you have to like do all these wee mini, it's kind of like a mini game kind of game, which I said in my PSP video, and I, I just didn't like it, you got to do some dances to get points to customize the card then you have to do other stuff like it's kind of an arcade kind of game let's put it that way it's a kind of an arcade kind of game i know i'm not talking about those games kind of as much it's because i already talked about them and i feel like i'll be repeating myself and yeah i don't want to repeat myself so harry potter and the prisoner of azkaban okay it's another movie based game this is actually all right but it's not my favorite harry potter game because mm, number one was the best number one on the pc was the best harry potter game ever Okay, trust me, anyone at all ages can play it, okay? It's a really great game. This, on the other hand, nah, it's not as great. It's very confusing and you don't know where you're going sometimes. And It tries to follow the storyline of the movie. I get what it's trying to do, but at the same time, I feel like, like it's, it's so boring and you feel like sometimes you're like stuck in this one mission trying to figure out where to go or stuck on what to do or where to go. It's just really, I don't know, so much of a struggle. I don't like it a lot, that's why I didn't really finish it, so yeah, that's that. Next we got 
a series of unfortunate events. Well, this game right here. So this game is actually a really good game. Now people are always saying movie licensed games probably getting kind of worried here. Because, you know, think about, I'm just going to use the Spider-Man games as an example. There's many other movie based games out here. It's not because I'm directly bashing Spider-Man. Just to make it easier for myself. I'm just going to say, you know the example I'm referring for. Just like Spider-Man games, just a lot of a movie based games out there. People just get kind of worried because it's going to be kind of trash and, you know, they rush to do it. But well, this on the other hand was a really great race, uh, racing game. Great, great action adventure game. Now... I didn't expect that. There's a lot of gadgets being used here. Like I feel like Batman. Like you're probably thinking, well, that's nothing to do with Batman. But I felt like Batman when I was playing this game because it makes you utilize a lot of stuff. You get out of certain areas and um, and it was actually really good. And it followed the storyline of the actual movie. And the gadget part was really cool and exploring all the different levels and doing all the different creative stuff. It's really creative. This game. That's why I loved it a lot. And it's such a great game it is, and it's so underlooked, like, you know what I mean? Because all these other games, and people get worried about the movie, movie licensed games and all that, and it's such a great game it is, I loved it a lot. I need to go back and play this, like, all the gadgets you use in this, and you make sure, you see, you see that gadget right there? You got a broomstick, and you got um, a boxing glove, and you use it as a weapon, you have to look up the environment around you and see what you can use to get out of that situation. It doesn't give you it just like that. You actually have to go and see, okay, yes, I'm going to go and get that bucket. I'm going to go and get that boxing glove. I'm going to attach it together and this is what I'm going to do to get out of this place. That's what it's like. It's such a great game it is. And you get to use all three characters, the baby, the girl, uh, the boy. I don't know all the names again because it's been such a long time. But it's a great... Um, it's a great book series as well, if you read all the books as well, uh, that's really great as well. And also, the game's really good, and the movie's kind of alright. Next, Tomb Raider, you know how I feel about Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider, uh, the, the Angel of Darkness. I think it was a really great Tomb Raider game, the only problem with it was the controls. Yeah, the controls weren't as great, and I'll admit it. And, that's not, and that shows you that I'm not a Tomb Raider fanboy, because I'm telling you problems with this game. But I love Tomb Raider, the Angel of Darkness. It was great, but it, the storyline was great, the missions was great, I felt like the boss sometimes, and and the, the problem was the controls. The controls just killed it for me. That was it, you know what I mean? But it was a really great game, and I just loved it a lot. Like, I loved it. It's such a great game it was, I'm not going to lie. But it was just the, for me, it was just the controls. A very interesting storyline, very great game it is. I like it a lot. Next. Now, Grand Theft Auto 3. Okay, no one can argue with me, it was the best game on the PS2 when it first came out. It was the best game ever. When that came out, it was so crazy. It was. I felt like, wow, you can do this in games. You can actually go in the car and steal them. You can, it felt like so realistic. Like, do you know the way you feel with GTA 5? That's the way I thought I looked back then. And when I go and look back at it, I thought, that doesn't look like that. Wait a minute, have they changed something here? But they haven't. It's just because graphics have changed over time and... You know, that's what happens in games age, unfortunately. But I think the game aged well. It still looks really good. There's so much classic memories of this game. It's really good it is. I love this a lot. I love this game series a lot. It's come a long way. You see me playing GTA 5 on my channel. You know, it's a great game. It's come a long way. It's all overall developed better. And this game's also available for mobile as well, which is really crazy to me because I thought back then it was, an it was just an achievement for it to be on the PS2. You know, all the graphics and all that. And now look at it, we have it uh, on our phones, you know, at the touch of our phones. We have GTA 3, Vice City, San Andreas, Liberty City Stories, you know, Tennis Town Wars. We have all those games on our phones. And back in, back in the day, it was such an achievement just to even run on a PS2, on a console, you know. Now look at it, is, that just so much shows how so much changed. Next, GTA 4 will be running on a phone. And I see that happening one day because phones nowadays are going so much powerful, so much, you know, futuristic now that they can handle that now. Like, like it's crazy to think that my phone is more powerful than my PS2 and, my P and the PS1 and all those old consoles. It's well more powerful than them. The, the, our phones is a game console in itself nowadays. Um, and this is Cars 2, mm, not the best game, I'm going to lie. It's kind of like a racing game, but trying to, trying to follow the... Trying to follow the storyline as much as it can, but 
it's not great. It's all right to play with, you know, it's got two players in it. It's all right to play with two people, but on your, on your own sometimes it feels like, eh, you know, I don't know what to say about that game. Next, we got Crash Bandicoot. Okay, I have to put this down for this. Crash Bandicoot, this Crash Bandicoot, was it called? The Wrath of Cortex. It was such an amazing game. I loved it a lot. I remember back in the day, back in the, when I bought the PS2, um, I bought this with a bundle and this was with it, that came with it, the Platinum Edition of Crash Bandicoot. Um, and uh, that's, that's, what, that's what I got it with and I remember just playing it for the very first time, I thought, wow, it was such a great platformer. I miss Crash Bandicoot a lot, you see me talking about it all the time, I'm so happy that they brought it back to the PS4, I'm so happy that I'll be coming out on PS4 remastered. I'll, I'll be such a. I'm definitely gonna make a video on that. It'll be such a great nostalgia trip for me to go back because Crash Bandicoot has a close place to my heart, just like Tomb Raider has a close place to my heart, just like Grant, there's the Grand Theft Auto series and many other games. It's just up there with those games. I loved a lot of Rayman and all that. I love this game. It's such a great game. It is such a great platforming in it, and all the Crash Bandicoot games were like that. Every Crash Bandicoot game was like that. Trust me, you can pick, play any Crash Bandicoot game, it'll be amazing. Right. Now, Narnia, this is another great game, another movie-based game. But if you've noticed the trend, they've got a lot of movie-based games. This one's a great game as well, and tries to follow the story of the movie as well. And yeah, great platforming in it, great fighting mechanics in it as two-player. And it really makes um, the two-player really good, because it doesn't like leave the second player out like most two-player games. It, makes, it joins them in with the first player and makes them just as important as the first player and you know to fight the battles you know to attack different enemy types sometimes you need both of you guys to do it and sometimes to get to certain levels it's easier with two players you know it made it really two player friendly like a lot of games didn't do that but yeah it was a great game it was I loved it a lot went through the storyline of the movie really good next got Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition this is one of the, my favorite um, favorite Midnight Club game. I got it on the PSP, the Vita. I got it for everything, and it was such a great game. It was, and this is what really got me into Midnight Club. It wasn't Midnight Club Two. It wasn't Midnight Club One. It was Midnight Club Three, which was really good. It was because I liked it a lot because it was it looked really realistic to me. Like Rockstar did a really good job with this. And I saw like in GTA 5, they, they took a lot of things from Midnight Club and implemented it in GTA 5, which I'm so happy they did because Rockstar really do know how to um, do a racing game with the car customization, open world and you know, it's, they're really good at doing that and I don't see why they're, I don't know why they're not really implementing, you know, doing more games like that because they're really good at doing games like that, racing games and some other action adventure games like Red Dead Redemption and you know, I know the Grand Theft Auto series is a very popular series, but I'd like to see them go go back into the other, you know, games like Smuggler's Run and Midnight Club, and you know, do more with them because they're really good. They're really good games that are kind of underlooked some of them because they're you know people are kind of suspect with them at the time. So Midnight Club Two, I'll be completely honest with you, I've not played this yet, so it's probably like Midnight Club Three, but less stuff maybe i don't know because i've not played it but it looks good it is it looks great but i've not played it yet so i thought i might as well show it uh okay this is this is a great game right here now okay put your gear and notepads out get your pen and paper out take some notes here another great movie based game see i'm not all movie based games are bad oh, look there's another one behind there look how many movie based games i got that's so funny Anyway, this is a great game, a lot of great platforming, in, and it's two player. Is it two player? Let me just check. Hold on, I check something. No, I wished it was two player. That's what it was. I thought it was two player, but I wished it was because, you know, it would have been such a good game as it was two player. The best Madagascar game ever. Even if you do not like Madagascar, you will love this. It's such great platforming in it. A lot of good stealth in it. You probably think, what? This is like some kiddie game. It's not some kid game. Trust me. It's got some stealth mechanic in it. It's got. It utilizes all the characters well. Each character has some different special, unique uh, special abilities, just like the Simpsons game. Like, you know, for example, um, Alex has uh, the roar because he's a lion. And then uh, the, I, I forgot all the names. I think Martin, yeah, him. Yeah, he, he can fly in the air. Uh, yeah, he flies in the air. He can kick doors, gates down. 
and she can i don't know what she can do again i don't know what she does again but yeah they you get the idea they all have different special abilities and they all have their own different missions and it goes by storyline in the movie there's a lot of great mechanics in it a lot of different level designs in it a lot of little lot little a lot of different levels in it and a lot of great level designs and really great game it is so don't get scared of all movie licensed games even say it's only the best games quality for platinum so this is actually a platinum game you didn't know that so that, that's saying something this game got platinum and midnight club 3 didn't get platinum that's saying something i showed you it's a great game so next I'm going to take a break from the movie license games because I'm getting tired of tired talking about them as you can see. I'm going to go to San Andreas first because GTA San Andreas was the best Grand Theft Auto game. Actually GTA 3 is one of my favorite. I put this with GTA 3 and GTA San Andreas is number one to me. I can't put them over there over each other because they're both really good in their own ways. That's those two are number one. This is such a great game. It is wow wow wow. This pushed the PS2 to its limits like I never thought that he, PS2 would handle this and it handled it really well I went from my favorite theme the 90s hip-hop theme and I love that's my favorite type of music and it was just such a perfect thing to do and implement it in the Grand Theft Auto series and I loved it a lot it was such a great storyline a lot of you know San Andreas is such a great game it was such a hard game though some missions are really hard like now the mobile version is kind of easier because it's got checkpoints in it and the PS3 version, the remastered PS3 version, but not the PS4 version. I bought the PS4 version thinking that they would remaster it, but they didn't. They just kind of upped it to 60 frames and they just left it like that. So yeah, <laughs> so still got that hard thing with no checkpoints. It's so frustrating some missions like that big smoke mission. All you have to do is follow the damn train, CJ. That one. Okay, I wonder if I did a good big smoke impression. I don't know if I did. All you have to do is follow the damn train. And my other, my other favorite quote from Big, Sno Big Smoke, uh, order number nine, a number seven large, the sex dip, and a large soda. I know he said more, but that was one of my other favorite lines of Big Smoke. That was a hilarious one. So it was really hilarious, great characters in it, really great acting in it. It was such a great game. It was like Officer Tenpenny. You can t tell he was like aggressive cop and he was, you know, not going to stand any any anything and you know you can see i like the way like he actually did so got so engrossed in the character the acting was so good and really like made it so realistic it really was so great it was it's such an achievement i think it's such a great achieve, achievement it's still such a great game to play today so yeah great game that is okay this is the grand theft auto series isn't it so let's do gta liberty City stories now i first played it on the PSP, which was a really great game, and I've got it on the PS Vita. I bought the PS2 version, just to have a complete GTA collection, and I think it's the best game on PSP. That's the best GTA game on PSP. So yeah, I think it's better playing on PSP because it was mainly made for the handheld. You know, the missions are just, they're great, they're really good missions, but they're not like, it's kind of expansion, but all I'm going to say is like an, an expansion to GTA 3. But I'm not saying it's a bad game, and I think it's great for the handhelds because it's a, a to it feels like a totally different experience playing on a handheld, but it won't feel like a totally different experience playing on the PS2 because it will feel very similar to the GTA 3. So, yeah, it's a great game, it is still pick, pick up for your PS2. Great game, it is great level designs, you know, really great, and you'll be very familiar with it. With the um, with the city because it's just GTA, th the lived city in GTA 3 you know and love, which is really great. So yeah, a very great, very great game it is. So essentially on the PS2, it's kind of like GTA 3, not on the PSP, sorry, it's like kind of like GTA 3 put on, uh, on the PSP. So yeah, that's what it kind of is like, but they put different missions in for you to make it a little bit different. So that's kind of, kind of like. If I say stories, another great GTA game was really a really jump and improvement from GTA 3. Really great is, I'm really happy the way they did it, but it's not my favorite GTA game. I prefer Vice City stories better than this. Now, people have their own personal preference. It's not my favorite GTA game. I like the theme they went for, but I prefer San Andreas because that has a close place to my heart and GTA 3 has a close place to my heart because I just remember the first time playing GTA 3 and my PS2 I thought dang games can actually do that like that really has such a memorable very such a good memory to me and San Andreas like put two of my favorite things together 90s hip-hop 
and the Grand Theft Auto series mashed up in one and it made San Andreas. So yeah, it's a great game, it is. everyone knows what Vice City is and you can pick up on your Android devices, your iOS devices, your Game Boy, you can pick up anything nowadays. Next, Rayman 3. It's actually a really good Rayman game, I'm not going to lie, but I prefer Rayman Legends and Origins now. Like, that was such a good move just to go from 3D platforming to, the t to 2D platforming because it was the best move because these Rayman games are actually pretty hard, I'm not going to lie. Rayman 2 was the hardest Rayman game ever. I played it so many times, I got it for every console, tried being it, tried doing, it, tried doing everything with it. I gave up and it's such a hard game, it's really really hard game, I'm, not, I'm never going to play it again. That's the only game I thought I'm giving, that, that game defeated me man. Okay, I got defeated by that Rayman 2 game, out of all the games I played, that's the game that defeated me. So yeah, Rayman 3, the, the, the difficulty level is not as hard and it's kind of a little bit different. And the great game it is, I'm not going to lie, it's a great game. Great level designs and all that, so great. Transformers the game was actually a really good Transformers game, I actually did really enjoy it. At the start, I played it multiple times. I actually, you know, liked it a lot because I like Transformers a lot. It was actually a really great game it is. And I think this is the game that did the transforming better in this game. Now you're probably thinking, what the heck? I mean by transforming into the car and transforming into their robot form, you know. And I think I did it well of all the games. I hate how all the other games, like when you transform into the car, it puts you in this kind of tank mode, but all the, the guns are pointing it. And I don't like that. I like how when the, the very, this one, the cars transformed and it went to the car form, you know. I don't know, I don't know. And that's kind of my wee gripe right there, but I like this game a lot. And it's actually a really great game it is. I, I, don't, I don't know, I really liked that a lot. Sometimes I thought like they could have did a little bit more, but it is a movie license game. And some of them are kind of semi good and some of them are really good and some of them are really trash. So it's a great game it is, follow the, the storyline really well. Great game it is. Now last of all, well, actually, I got another one right here. Last, well, the second last one is the Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I talked about this on my PSP video, and I, I actually, I actually was so happy to put it on the PSP. But the thing is with this game is the best, but the second best Harry Potter game because I put Harry Potter number one and maybe two. Actually, this is the third one because Harry Potter one and two was a really great game. Those are two amazing. Harry Potter games on the PC, only on the PC. Do not buy the PS1, no, the PS2 version of the Harry Potter 1 and 2. Buy the PC version, that was amazing it was. I don't know why they didn't do that even more. Now, this is really great it was, and it was two player. As far as it follows the line of the story, if you really loved the Harry Potter series and loved Harry Potter 4, the movie, this is really good because it follows the lines of the storyline and also, really great is it's not like really boring and you know it's not like Call of Duty like I found the Deathly Hallows uh, <laughs> and that sucked that's, that was mainly a Call of Duty that was Call of Duty with Harry Potter that's what they did Call of Duty Black Ops with Harry Potter mashed up in one and it made Harry Potter into Deathly Hallows this is not like that on the other hand it really isn't like that follows the lines of storyline you know you meet all the similar characters like Mad Eye Moody and Dumbledore, also Harry Potter, and you know everything else. It's a really great game. It was. I really enjoyed it a lot. I just remember the first time putting it on my PS2, I was like dying. It's such a great game it was, but it was not as good as by no Harry Potter one and two. So a really great game it is if you love Harry Potter. Now you're probably wondering where's the case for this and why is it so slimmed down. I found this somewhere on the floor, and then I found it. I thought, okay, I'll take it. I took it, and then I just put it in. I just took it and I put it in one of these cases. Uh, so it protects it. It's a great Spider-Man game, but not my favourite one. It's alright. It's semi-good. <laughs> it's alright. I don't, I don't even want to talk about it because I didn't even play it much, so yeah. So that's kind of look at my PS2 collection. I'll just... So that's kind of a look at my PS2 collection. Looks like you kind of see all the games. But back in the day, this was triple the size of it. I'm not joking with that. Anyone with a PS2 will tell you that you think I'm just kind of collecting all my games back again. This is kind of a, uh, um, a lesson I'm going to teach, okay, for all those people collecting and they're kind of younger basically, you know, do not sell your stuff, okay, that's what I, I learned over the years, do not sell your stuff, okay, because every gamer at a younger age makes that mistake because they feel like they don't need it anymore, they feel like they won't play it anymore, no, okay, because I sold so much stuff back then, I regretted it a lot and I had to fork out more money just to get it all back again. 
And so yeah, so not only now I'm gonna kind of getting my collection back up together, my PS2 collection back to, and my PS3 collection back to, because I sold that. Like, I sold that because I thought I didn't need it. But keep everything. That's all I'm gonna say. Just because something new comes out doesn't mean you have to sell your old stuff. It doesn't make make it irrelevant because the new ones out. That's all I'm gonna say. So for you collectors out there, you younger collectors out there, uh, and older collectors, if you if you're doing that. But yeah, that, that's kind of pretty much a, my video of my PS2 collection video. You kind of see what it looks like. And I did a video comparing the PlayStation 4 and the PS2, which will be right up there if you want to check it out to see the big differences between them and the hardware. So you have to look at my PS2 collection. And let me know what you think down below. Let me know any other collection videos you want me to do. Leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll catch you guys next time. I have all the software to record our funny moments. But back then we had so much funny moments, we did so much funny stuff, it's unbelievable. Like this game actually makes you, you know, do a lot of creative stuff, think about a lot of creative stuff. Even though like people might say all oh, balance and all that, but I don't know, it makes you do a lot of 